Hello and welcome back to S&C TV. In this episode, we're going to take a look at steadiness, steadiness in the shooting field. So what do I mean by steadiness? I mean that we can take our dog off the lead and that the dog will sit steady, won't move, won't run in, won't run off, uh, won't chase game uh, whilst the shooting is going on. I think it's really important to note at this point that you don't have to have a dog that will operate off lead in the shooting field. There are some brilliant teams and individuals, um, pickers up, beaters, who use their leads a lot in the shooting field uh, and there's nothing wrong with that at all. So what we're going to do now is we're going to set up a scenario in a mock shooting field where we're going to see some young dogs uh, learning that next level up from the training field. Now they're going to be sat out uh, in, in a cover crop in, in, a, in an area where there is gunfire and lots of dummies being shot around them. So we've set up a training scenario here to simulate a uh, picking up scene. Um, myself and Lindsay are out, we've got two dogs each. We're wanting the dogs to be steady. They could be on lead. Uh, they could be on lead throughout the drive. If we've done enough work, we can have our dogs off lead. It makes it easier for us. It makes it easier for the dogs. And they can sit throughout the drive and be steady throughout. So what we're going to do is we're going to fire a few shots, throw a few dummies around, and you'll see the dog's reaction to the, to the sound of shot and, of course, uh, to, to the dummies landing, which are imitating birds. Jensen here. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll start the shooting. And you see this young dog here, he's just moved a bit. I'll give him a little bit of a tap, bring him back and sit him up. And now they're reloading the gun and we're gonna re redo that exercise again. So bang, bang. See this young dog here, Jensen, he's really up on his toes. The other dogs, the more experienced dogs are sat much quieter. No, leave that. So, you can see Jensen's reaction there. Yeah, this young Labrador, he's not done this exercise before. He's not been in this scenario before. So Paddy's just been out and made a retrieve. He's not been in this scenario before. And you can see he's just on his toes a bit. So he's really not ready to be left on his own on a day shooting. So we've just watched a video where we simulated a, a day's picking up or, or a drive with uh, two handlers, each with a brace of dogs. <clears throat> and what was interesting for me is I had a young dog called Jensen, a little uh, black dog or big black Labrador. And I was surprised, in spite of all the training that I've done on the training field prior to that, that when the shots were fired, and then the dummy was thrown, and it was at the point where the dummy was thrown, Jensen kind of hopped up, and I didn't expect to see that. And so um, it's interesting how that extra energy that's created by the shooting field, and make no mistake, the transition from the training ground with dummies to live game and all that encompasses a day's shooting is massive. And as Jensen demonstrated, he was a little bit more excited than I expected him to be. And we'll have to do a little bit more steadiness work in order to prepare him to be better ready for the shooting field in the future. Um, as we said before, there's no embarrassment. It's always a good thing, top tip put a lead on a dog. If you've got any doubt about his steadiness or his safety, if you put a lead, a lead on the dog, it almost guarantees the safety of the dog. And so each and every time we layer up, for, including in the training field, but especially when we go to the shooting field, we need to expect this extra level of energy and subsequently going back almost to the beginning again and putting the lead on. So on your very first day's shooting, it would be pragmatic to expect to put the lead on because just like with Jensen, you don't quite know how this is going to show itself once the dog gets really excited. So uh, we're, all, we're, we're using an ordinary 
uh, field trial slip lead. Um, it's the choice of most gun dog trainers uh, and we're just slipping on and we want that nice and loose. And the really important thing about lead work guys is that the lead is loose. The dog learns nothing from a tight lead. It's unpleasant for the dog, it's unpleasant from you, for you and all you're doing is restraining the dog. So if I'm back in that picking up scenario that we looked at earlier and I'm stood with Paddy. Remember, I don't want to stand like, oh my God, don't run in, don't run in, don't run in, because that gives the dog the wrong impression. I want to stand shoulders up, shoulders back. I've got this. The dog's in the heel position. Um, I sometimes let my dog sit in front of me so that they can see what they're going on, what's going on. But that has a bit of a power jostle. It allows the dog a little bit of, a bit too much energy out in front of you. So it's probably prudent to be stood with the dog at heel, which is why we use the heel position. The lead is loose all of the time and in the event that during the drive, the dog makes a sudden movement to run in or gets overly excited, uh, the lead will restrain him momentarily. You can give him a little tap with the lead, a little correction, and then as always, whenever we give a correction, it's always followed by instruction. Correction, instruction. Hey, don't do that, fella. No, don't do that. Come back, sit here, loose lead straight again. Hey, I really like this. So, um, hopefully those few tips are helpful. Like I said, just to consolidate that, do not be frightened of using the lead. Use the lead, use the lead, use the lead. What we do want to make sure is if it's now the end of the drive, we don't want to just take this lead off and go fetch it. Yep, because what we'll teach the dog, good boy Paddy, it, what we'll teach the dog is it, to, to understand that lead off means go. We don't want that. We want the lead to come off, the dog not expect to retrieve automatically, and perhaps a little exercise even on a shoot day. If the shooting is finished, we just turn and say paddy heel, and we walk away, and then maybe bring him back to whatever position we want to be in before we set him up to send him for a retrieve. So guys, in conclusion, use the lead. Level one, make sure your lead's on. Uh, make sure when you take your lead off, you settle your dog before you send him. And in a second, we'll look at a couple of other techniques we can use um, to make that transition to a, a dog in the shooting field that's off the lead throughout the whole drive. So as we said earlier, this episode is all about um, the transition from the training field to the shooting field and the steadiness that we want in and around it. In technique number one, we looked at how that we can use a lead on to train a dog and keep him steady. If we go to kind of level two, I say level two, it's just a technique that you can use. Instead of having the lead on the dog, both in training in the shooting field, uh, 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 pardon me, in training on the shooting field and off the field, we can just loop the lead around him like this. It's just very loose. It means that if and when we want to take the lead off without that big transition from lead on, we can just slide the lead away. Remember, we're not just ever sending the dog lead off, go. Slide the lead away, put it away in your shooting coat or your shooting vest, and now we're ready. It's just a a slightly different version of having the lead on properly. It's not quite as secure as having the lead on, but by having it here, remember we're not trying to restrain the dog. We want as little tension on that lead as possible. Again, if the dog made a move, as long as I've got hold of this properly, we can just give him a little correction or tap. No, don't do that. Bring him back into the heel position, sit him up and see if he's learnt from that uh, small correction. So another lead technique, guys, that you can use as kind of, I guess, level two from coming off the lead. We're just using the lead there um, to be extra careful. So we're looking at the use of the lead and a couple of tips on how to use the lead to get that transition from lead on to lead off. We've looked at two so far. We've had the lead on completely loose lead. We've had the lead draped, just suspended around the dog's shoulders and just loosely held there. And now probably final, the final one, because you're really kind of assuming that the dog's really steady by now. Sometimes all you need to do is just lay the lead across the dog. Yeah, just gently let him feel it on his neck. It's a bit of a confidence trick you're kind of encouraging the dog to think he's still connected to the lead before finally we sit out a whole drive with the lead off and lead away. Um, so there are three small, important, and I hope useful techniques um, that you can use 
as you make that transition, as we've said earlier, from lead on to lead off, both in. This is not just about the shooting field. This is through every transitional level where you go from basic puppy training to sitting while somebody throws dummies around you, whilst you move from um, uh, intermediate training to having other dogs retrieving around you. The same techniques can be used throughout. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you've enjoyed this episode of S&C TV, please like and subscribe.